Hello, my name is Jim Finney. I'm founder of Epiphany. And today we will cover the application of our CPH silt separator technology for cleaning up drinking water uh, in the flushing process of pipelines. Pictured here is the flush truck and we will cover the flushing process, why Fresno City and other similar cities flush and how our technology can improve the process and increase Fresno's ability to flush more lines annually and save monies. Flushing is typically done by closing isolation valves so a specific section of a mainline pipe can be flushed out through the hydrant as shown in the background video. EPA recommends flushing for, for all drinking water distribution systems as shown by the literature in this slide. Fresno flush trucks allow them to do the flushing process to conserve water, especially dur important during drought periods. As you will don't want to send thousands of gallons of water down the storm drains. The use of the booster pump also increases the scouring velocity, and which allows the removal of more solids that are deposited in the bottom of the pipe. So we're going to look at how are we going to help them do this job. So let's look at the magnitude of the flushing requirements in the city of Fresno. The distribution system is about 1,880 miles of distribution pipeline. There's over 140,000 service connections. And remember this number, 13,000 fire hydrants. There's 265 pump stations, wells, effectively. Though not covered in this presentation, some of our technologies address water quality issues, whether it is settable solids like you'll see today coming from the well or the or water issues that are endemic in, in the, the water itself, including uh, PFOs, PFAs, hydrocarbons, as well as other elements that are toxic like manganese and to, to mention a few, silica. Uh, pilots are under discussion to address those issues as well. There's three booster pump stations where maybe we could also prevent these solids from entering the downstream pipelines, you know, mitigating the flushing requirement. And then there's three water storage tanks that effectively we, we have access to a reservoir management system, which could add, could ensure adequate disinfection and improve oxygen content of the water, improve stagnation and drinkability of the water. The problem facing uh, Fresno arises from the lime added to prevent corrosion of the metal pipes, uh, manganese is settable solids as all also dissolved, but today only the settable solids are we talking about. Other precipitants that could settle out in the pipeline, including corrosion byproducts. And uh, when they do these flushing trucks, which we'll see, they use one micron absolute bags, and those tend to blind off fairly quickly. And it takes 30 minutes each time they have to change out the bags, and that occurs frequently during each of the flush processes. Those bags cost about $10 each. And they spend over $100,000, and that was of three or four years ago, so I'm sure the number is quite high, much bit, bit higher now uh, each year for bags. So let's get a better picture of how they set up to flush the pipeline. The pipeline system is isolated using below ground valves so that the flow is directed to the flow area discharge hydrant so they can flush the pipe. The flushing truck itself which we see here is positioned between two hydrants, usually close to the hydrant we're pulling out of, and they will connect the large hose to that hydrant and to the suction side of the booster pump that's located on this filter truck. And then that's, after it passes through the filters, that's connected to uh, downstream here to, a, uh, to another hydrant. And you can see in the foreground that we have our, our filter here and we're taking water out of that same hydrant to show the efficacy of the system. So let's move on to how the separator works and performs to remove solids from the water. So let's talk about our flat, flagship product and that's the CPH-16 which is unchallenged in the marketplace in terms of solids removable and that's solids that settle out when the water is, is, is sampled. So here's our CPH-16 separator. The water basically comes in from the bottom, goes up here, 
It's radially distributed across this plate where there's 16 hydrocyclones uh, located. And this spins up the water, the solids move to the outside, fall down into the clear collection chamber, and the clean water comes out the top. This nice clear con collection chamber allows for intuitive operation. We can either manually flush it or we can flush it automatically. And to give you an idea of the kind of, of solids that we're able to remove, here's a picture that shows basically baby byproducts, I guess is the best way. Very, very thin, uh, very, very small product, par particles when they're separated. Let's look at a video, but I want you to pay attention because when we talked earlier about the inlet versus the outlet, initially we're only losing one PSI difference across this and then they'll, they'll throttle it back and we'll have three PSI. This is a very low pressure loss, which means it's a very efficient in terms of energy, energy applied to, to do the project. So let's watch this video. You've got solids coming out the bottom, as I showed you before, from the clear chamber. And you can see that's a lot of solids. Looks like soup. And then this is at one PSI differential. You can see the clean water and the comparison between the two. Now he's going to increase it to three PSI by closing the valve a little bit. Pretty, pretty effective demonstration and uh, quite, quite efficient in its removal of solids. So when we look at that collection chamber, we'll touch on it again, but it makes it very easy to, to manage the solids. Nobody ever else offers a clear collection chamber. It's an excellent pre-filter for cartridges and bags or any kind of filter because it removes solids all the way down to ultra filtration range, which is a half micron. Nobody else can do it at our price point or our energy usage. Um, we can design these for high flow and high efficiency um, because of the uniqueness of this. We stay with this design, but we can put them in parallel. We've got systems designed up to 12,000 gallons a minute, but there's literally no flow. We could just double that right away with just another assembly. One of the other unique aspects is not only the, the low pressure loss, but also we can handle variable flow. So a lot of processes they are not able to use these kind of devices because they have to be in a very specific pressure loss. So if the pressure and flow change, we're able to, uh, to account for that. So it allows you to use variable speed drives quite easily. So let's take a look at the relative size of the particles that we remove. And remember I said we go all the way down to, to half a micron, which would be in the range of a, of a, of a uh, a virus, which is around 0.35. And you can see here's an agitated water sample. And this would be reflective of particle sizes all the way across, both floating and, and, and settable. Now, what's interesting is our competition, by and large, only removes down about 40 microns in, in large, large percentages. So as you look at this sample here, you can see there's a little bit of settable solids. But here's all the solids that they are unable to remove in that process to go back through the filter, back to the process. And if you look at our, our capabilities, now this is representative of what we would remove in a single pass. You can see not only the solids they remove quite quickly, but several layers above. And then, then these filters, if we pass through again, we would we'd get another cut at it. But you can see all the way down here to, to basically half micron. So when we're looking at the cooling tower industry, which we're going to focus, but a lot of industries, if we can get down to five microns or better, typically we can, we can provide drinking water clarity or close to it. So let's look at, at the separation of solids at the beginning of the flush process. Note the inlet water is pretty clear. You can see a little bit of solids, but after it goes in and up here to the separation and then the solids fall out here and accumulate you can see we're removing quite a bit of solids let's look at this picture here and, and it becomes even more apparent you can see where the clear water is entering goes through this black pipe up to the separation area and then you can see the solids that are accumulating now the this is manganese the white stuff is lime now a video okay if we look at this 
So this is well below 5 NTU and we're still pulling out solid. But yet when you take a sample, it looks crystal clear. This is amazing. So that's just 5 NTU or better is often the clarity we, we find in drinking water we, bought, we, we buy. But most importantly, the uh, most interesting finding was the truck operator has done many of these flushes previously uh, measure NTU or parts per million in real time. The operator saw the impact of just filtering out additional solids downstream and effectively cutting the in half the time we went from 5 NTU to 1 NTU, which was their target clarity for the flush water. So let's look at what we're going to do. We're going to take that single separator now put it in a manifold for eight that'll fit on a truck bed much like a truck camper would and we're going to basically um, use this in a later slide uh, you'll see the same single skid will now be incorporated into the final solution so the pilot will build into the final solution but we will demonstrate on this project that the separator allows multiple passes per hour uh, removing significant solids every time it passes speed up the overall process significantly as we saw from the operator alone in the, in the final processing and then reduce the number of bags by using for the final polish using the bags only at the end so once the pilot system operates as expected based on our previous field test we would incorporate the the pilot into a trailer system with three epiphany skids arranged in parallel uh, to handle a wide range of flow rates. Fresno would use one of their trailers for each of their trucks. Um, that would give them two trailers, three of these units per trailer, and then one, two, or three could be used to handle flows from 500 to, to 3,000 gallons per minute. Also note that for very large pipelines, the two trailers could conceivably be connected in parallel to handle up to 6,000 gallons a minute. Again, showing the modularity and flexibility of the C CPH silt separate. The current proposal for the final system will be three of the units used for the pilot mounted on a trailer. These units will be plumbed so that the water can run through the, those to either return to the pipeline system for a majority of the flush time and then for the final polishing through the separators and then the bag filter and then return back to the to the pipeline. Once the full solution is implemented, we would expect the following benefits to accrue. Increase the number of sites that we can flush each year per truck. Significantly reduce bag changes, which improves the overall process. Uh, improve scouring and removal of the solids. And, esta and establish a total economic impact. Just briefly, a, a new truck costs over 250K, bags over 100K. If we imagine we gain 25% efficiency per truck, we have two trucks, that's an overall process efficiency of 50%. Uh, that would be equivalent to half the cost of a new truck if we could certainly assume that we save that amount of money or we increase our, our, our efficiency. And then we'd save another 50K in bags. Uh, conservatively, I think we'll save more. And the total impact is equivalent to about 175K per year. That would be enough to pay for, for uh, two trailers in 24 months with a resulting ROI of 34%. So here's some examples of our literature that's already in place, but we've talked today about the opportunity, the unique position we're in with the combination of this really superior performing uh, filtration. Uh, we didn't cover some of the other hybrid stuff that we can do in terms of the filtration, but we also talked about combining that with water treatment and to create a very, very unique opportunity and solution for a number of different industries, including the data center industry, which is going to grow leaps and bounds over the next five or six years. So please contact us if you're interested and thank you for your time.